Hey everyone, welcome back to Gen AI Vlog. Today we're gonna do an as your episode. So we're gonna try to stand up a static website using Azure Storage. So it took me probably about 30 minutes to figure this out. Uh, it's not a very difficult process. Uh, so you do need an Azure account, of course, uh, subscription as well. Uh, first thing you do is to go to storage accounts. Uh, if you don't know where that is, go to the search box, type in storage, and then uh, this link will pop out. Uh, so once you click on that, it will bring you to this subdirectory, and then you can click on create. So in here, uh, typically what I do is I have different resource groups that falls under different things I do or different tasks I do. Uh, for this particular instance, I'm going to be using this one and then obviously create a name. So I'm going to say sample website v1. For the region, typically go to US East 1 for the default one, but I think I use up the quota for that surface. So I'm going to use this region and you should be all set. Click on review and create to instantiate the deployment and to see the deployment is successful. Once the deployment is complete, as you see here, you can click on go to resource. This will take you to this user interface. So if you scroll down, you see that I already added my favorites to be static website and containers. You will need to go to containers first. If you don't have this added in your favorites, you can scroll down to data storage. You'll be able to find the same button. Click on that. You will need to create a new container called web. So dollar sign web, you can hit create. That will be able to create a new container. Click in there. You'll be able to see this upload button. And this is where you upload the artifact. Now, we're talking about a website. So obviously, there's some sort of HTML code that you need to upload here. So from here, let's go to VS Code. So I created this V1 folder to store all the artifact. Uh, this V1 folder is just a folder in my local computer. You can save it anywhere you want, documents, desktop, places like that. And I will need to create a couple of things. So as a quick demonstration, I'm actually going to go to OpenAI ChatGPT to help me create a static web page. Here's my ChatGPT window. I designed a code assistant that helped me does that. So I'll say write a whole world web page for me. Do this in three scripts, index.html, script.js, and style.css. The page should have black background and white font color. There is a hello world sentence in the main page. And the uh, text become bigger as user clicks on it. So just give a little bit of the interactivity so that we know that the JS is actually taken into effect, right? So you hit enter, it will give you three things. There is a HTML, that is the front end design. There is a CSS, that is a style, font color, font size, background color, things like that. And then there's a JavaScript. The JavaScript defines the interactivity between the user as well as the website. So we have a couple of scripts stuffed out. I'm going to get these things into VS Code. So there you go. Now I moved all of the content from ChatGPT into my VS Code. And as you can see here, there's a HTML that's a front end. Here it says hello world, and that's really it. it makes a reference call to styles.css. So whatever the style, the color, the font size, right, in this web page is going to be taken from the code from the CSS script. And then there's some sort of interactivity, right? So we have a class object here that's a container. Uh, so this division in HTML, that's the container. And this container is called upon if user does something, right? So exactly what that action is defined is all happening in this JavaScript script, right? So here we have a hello text and the hello text is calling upon or referencing this ID that's in this line of code in this division. And this happens in this event listener. So 
if user click on it, it will do something, right? And precisely what it's gonna do is it's going to increase font size by five, right? And the unit is PX. So this should be well-defined. It's gonna get bigger and it's gonna get bigger by font size five. And this .js script, it's referenced here, line 13 in script.js, that's where it's called. So the logic should be very clear. Now let's render this web page locally in our browser. Just like that, click on it, it gets bigger, and then it gets bigger again, and it keeps going, so on and so forth. So now we know that this is working and we click on it and something happens. Let's get this up to Azure. So let's come back to this container. Let's hit upload. Let's drag and drop everything into this container storage. So this is my folder here. We have index, script, and styles. These are the three artifacts that I use to create that web page. I select all of them, and I drag and drop into this location here, and I press Upload. And I'm all set. Now the artifacts are on this container in this storage. So let's go back to the container. Let's scroll down to static website. It should be under data management, or if it's in the favorites, it can also be shown up here as well. Click on that. And you need to select enable. And for the index document, you can just use index.html. For error, the go-to one is 404.html as a habit. And last but not least, you press save. And as you can see here, once this is enabled and you save the function of static website, you'll be able to see this primary endpoint. Now, of course, you can copy that, go to an e-cognito, paste the URL in your browser, and you'll be able to see this website. And if you click on it, you should be able to see that this font size is getting bigger every time you click on it. Of course, if you hit refresh, it will go back to the original status. And you click on it, it will enlarge, every time it will enlarge by font size five. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like.